what's happening. Welcome here to Where in the Sports World. On this episode, we are joined by former LSU Tiger Keith Hornsby. Keith currently playing basketball overseas in Germany for Oldenburg in his first season in Germany's basketball Bundesliga. It's the top level of basketball in Germany. And Keith, he's an interesting guy. He's the son of Grammy Award winning musician Bruce Hornsby, who you may know from his hit song the way it is or for the fact that he was a touring member for the Grateful Dead. We'll talk about that. Keith also played alongside now NBA star Ben Simmons when Simmons and Keith were at LSU. So we've got plenty to talk about with Hornsby who has put together a really good season so far in Germany this year. So why don't we go to Europe right now and catch up with Keith. Keith fill the people in where in the sports world are you right now? I'm in Germany, specifically Oldenburg, Germany, in Lower Saxony, especially Northwest Germany. So there you have it. You really summed it all up. I mean, have you dove into like trying to learn a little bit about where you've been in, in the short time you've been there? It's harder to really learn about the historical facts, I guess, especially maybe in my area. But what I have done is try to learn a little bit of German, the language. Which is difficult, yeah. it is, but uh, through Duolingo, the, the app, the great app, um, you might have talked about that with Phil Pressey, but maybe not, but we, uh, we've both been doing it, and so far, so good. I've made a lot of progress. So, so you, you have dove in, and you're, you're learning some German. You're like, where, where's your German level at? Oh, it's still very low. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, due to the circumstances, uh, I'm not able to have much interaction you know, in, in the world, uh, other than maybe a grocery store or something, but, um, or with teammates, but that's good enough. That's helped. But, uh, yeah, you know, only three months in, I, I started a little bit late when I was here. Uh, I'm still a beginner for sure, but I'm pleased with my progress. That's fair enough. I, I we were talking with Phil Pressey, your teammate before, and like the I've had a chance to do some of your games here in the United States and the mix of guys you have, it, it's been a fun team to watch. How, how do you describe what the locker room mixture is like with especially some of the guys like you and Phil and Ricky Paulding has been really, really good. The veteran presence on that team. What's the mix like? Uh, I guess as far as other players go, other American players, I, I, I don't have as much European experience. So I haven't been in as many European locker rooms as say uh, the other guys, you know, Nathan Booth, Braden Hobbs, Phil. Uh, I mean, Ricky's been in this locker room, for, <laughs> in Odenberg locker room for, you know, over a decade. So, uh, but I would say it's, you know, the, the German players are pretty, I hate saying it, but, you know, for Americans, they feel kind of Americanized. You know, they're easy to talk to. Um, they all speak great English. Um, there's not, not much of a language barrier. You know, we have uh, an Austrian uh, Balkan guy, Rashid Mahabasic, and he's, yeah. uh, he's his own separate character, but, you know, entertaining all the same just to know and be in contact with. But it's a great locker room. I will say the Oldenburg team this year is one of the best locker rooms I've, I've ever been in. Maybe arguably the best, um, I guess, as overall relationships go between everybody. There's no real clicks, you know. There's no divide, not much divide between Americans and foreign players, which is kind of the case last year for me in Poland. But this year, it's been it's been great. Yeah. And, and honestly, that's kind of the feel I've gotten from from watching your game. So I'm glad that that comes through. I mean, your team kind of embodies that. Where on any given night, one of like five guys could go off for 20 points, and he becomes the star, and and you guys win. Yeah, we have a very deep team. Um, I knew that coming in here. I'm like, uh, you know, we can go pretty much 10 guys, 10 guys play each game, fairly equal minutes. And it's, I find that's probably the case for most of the better European teams. Um, they're, they're deep. They have a, a lot of talent, a lot of experience. And we definitely do here. Um, and like you said, you're pretty spot on. You never know who's going to kind of catch fire each given night. You never know. I mean, we all know Ricky can do it. He's been doing it for, <laughs> for years. But um, so that's kind of fun. Um, just got to learn how to, 
you know, uh, share the wealth, which really isn't a problem on this team. We don't have too many, shall I say, selfish individuals. Um, and that's, that's kind of helps us all from square one. So deep team. For your team individually, like the number of times that you come in, you hit like two or three threes, you've got nine or 10 points. And it's like within like three or four minutes, what is it about your ability to like catch fire? Because like when you hit, it's like, just keep feeding this guy. I don't know how to describe it really. It's just something that I guess I can do. Um, it's honestly, the, the less I think about it, the better <laughs> chance I have of catching fire. It's, it's really pure instinct, pure, you know, if I, if I overthink, that's never good in basketball anyways. Um, and a lot of it, you know, it's, it's so cliche for, you know, any modest pers- basketball player to always – you know, say, well, if not for my teammates, it would never happen. But in this case, it's very, very true. I mean, without my teammates setting me up to get these looks, they just wouldn't happen and just get. And at this point, you know, having played with them for at least you know, five months, uh, they we're going to know each other pretty well. Um, but as far as me catching fire, uh, it's happened fairly often this year. And I will say, I do like these spalding basketballs that we play oh, with. Oh, that's the secret. I'm not going to, you know, I, I can't undervalue that part of it because, I don't know, last year I played with these molten balls, uh, the FIBA molten balls. I just, they're a lot more slick. I always like the spalding balls. So if that has anything to do with it, it, it can only help. But then I don't want to uh, – I guess devalue my the work I put in because obviously that goes without saying all the shots you see that I make I practice I pra- practice quick release shots off balance shots not as much contested shots at this point in my career that's just something I kind of expect to make um, but uh, yeah it's definitely this year more than ever I've shot the ball well compare because you, you mentioned you were in Poland before you're now in Germany compare what the I guess maybe the mindset of the locker room and what the feeling is like in the European leagues compared to when you were in the G league, like what are the differences? You know, it's the best part of being in Europe compared to the G league locker room is the fact that the rosters are pretty much set in stone. There's still movement. Don't get me wrong. But you know, when I was in the G league with the Texas legends, my last year, a perfect example, we broke a record. We had 30 players play on the roster. So, so you know, in the locker room, it's just kind of weird. You never know who's going to be there for that long. And sometimes you have guys, two-way players or assignment guys from the NBA being sent down that you don't even know they're going to be playing the game. And then they show up, you know, and I'm at shoot-around, but they're at the game. It affects the locker room a little bit. Um and that's just the kind of thing that with, with Europe, you just don't see, uh, you know, no, no teams are having 25, 30 guys suit up for them each year. Uh, and not every G league team is like that. I think the legends were um, at least two out of the three years that I was there. Um, and I like the fact that I can really get to know my teammates in yeah. Europe. And that's one of the best parts for me is that is getting to know the foreign guys, actually, you know, they it's just, it was the best. I had some great Polish teammates last year, my first experience overseas. And, you know, I don't know. The G League locker room is more like a college locker room. You know, younger, younger locker room. Uh, I appreciate kind of an old – I kind of like that. Maybe I'm, a, I'm an old soul, but <laughs> that's, the, that's probably the best answer I could give you. What's the grind like? Because I was talking to Phil and I've talked to some other guys about what the, gr- like the grind of the G League. What's, the, what's your like, best story to sum up the grind of working away in that league? Um, there's, they lessen these type of games, but there's some trips where you play back-to-backs. Um, and you have lots of times, probably seven or eight back-to-back uh, weekends each year. But sometimes you – so yeah, I play Friday night in Salt Lake City, then night game, wake up at, you know, five o'clock a.m. the next day and fly, you know, fly and have to play in, you know, L.A. or Santa Cruz the next night. And you're flying, you know, you're flying coach, you'd have to, hor- you know, horrible seats, have to go through the whole flying commercial, you know, just going through security. It just wears you down. Yeah. Um, 
Now, don't get me wrong. I love the fact that G League plays a lot of games. More games and less practice, I'd say any player would take more games. I feel like they'd probably be lying if they yeah. said otherwise, but I can't speak for everyone. Um, but that example right there, that would happen probably four times a year, um, these type of legs. And that's when you're like, man. And then the next morning after the back-to-back -back game, you wake up again at 5 a.m. and have to travel back home. And it's right. just – you're like husks, like at that point, just fatigued husks walking through the airport just waiting to get home and take a nap. So, A little different from the travel at LSU, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think overseas guys don't understand how amazing you get it at, cer at, at certain levels in yeah. college, at the high levels, like LSU. I was, I was at Asheville, UNC Asheville, too. So yeah, I got you had both. I, I had the long bus trips and the, the charter flights. So I, <laughs> I had both. So you went from the UNC Asheville, like kind of mid-major – college basketball experience to where what you're probably getting in a bus if it's within like eight hours right yeah yeah we <laughs> we flying would be last resort <laughs> it would be uh if you had to if you're going to like hawaii or something <laughs> but uh yeah we we drove to ohio state from Asheville. we drove to new york you know from ohio state to new york we, we drove everywhere but then you know you try to keep your non-conference games fairly close uh, yeah, but yeah, it was, it was normal to have six hour bus rides and come back after the game. That's just a part of it kind of, and nothing wrong with it. It's just a part of it, but yeah, those flights back are pretty nice, but I certainly didn't take them for granted. Haven't been on the other side before. So. That's true. I, I think it was when I was looking back throughout your career, I think it's interesting because at LSU, obviously you had the opportunity to play with Ben Simmons when you were a senior and, and he was in his one year there. You obviously at Oak Hill Academy when you spent uh, time there in high school played with with great talent. How did that help you kind of adapt your game as you're going up knowing like you're going to be playing with great talent throughout? I, I would think that the experience at Oak Hill probably helped you. Yeah, you know, it just forced me to always be kind of on edge, always have like know that I have to play my best just to survive here kind of because I was never, you know, I've never seen as the same type of player as those type of guys, you know, especially when I was in high school or even college. Um, so lots of times I was fighting for my food, shall I say, you know, fighting for playing time and playing with those guys. I had no chance to relax, no chance to rest. And it definitely helped me. Um, and when I had success against those guys or, you know, in practice and, and even played at the same level that they did at times, it really helped my confidence out going forward. Um, so I'd say that for sure helped me. What was the year with Ben Simmons like? Because obviously, like, I'm a Philadelphia Sixers fan, so obviously I, I've enjoyed watching him play, play <laughs> yeah. in Philly. But, I mean, he gets, I mean, he gets a lot of stuff because he, like, he came in with all the expectations from the time he was young. So, like, from somebody who had a chance to, to be in a, a locker room with him, what, what, what was the year like? Um, not only was I in the locker room with him, he was my roommate. Oh, okay. um, we lived, we lived together that year. They stuck him with me. I was a fifth year senior, you know, I'm the guy, you know, he, he's not going to lead him down the wrong path. You know, he's not going to lead him astray. So, uh, but I also hosted him on his visit too. So I had known Ben before and he was really comfortable with me and yeah, he's, he's a good friend. I mean, but that year was just wild is a lot of the ups and plenty of downs as yeah. most people remember. <laughs> um, but Ben just being there, I, it was just, it was just an odd dynamic. Everyone knew how big he was. He was already a star. Even then they had camera crews following him around on campus. You know, how can anybody else be normal with that going on? Um, you know, I, I, I could have like a, you know, or, or any other player, we had a great roster, um, yeah, could have, yeah. you know, like a 25 point game, but no matter what, Ben could have a six point game, he'd be all over the highlights, no matter what. And, uh, and that's more of a selfish approach, but you know, just all in all little things like that add up. And, but, uh, but, but then again, you know, he, it was cool being around him because I, I knew that he was a special talent, you know, he's such a natural, naturally gifted guy and, and a good guy. And, and, uh, and don't get me wrong, he enjoyed his college experience. 
sure. not like most people think that he was you know his his only his lone college year was miserable he 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 was a college college basketball player he's a he reaped the benefits for at least most of the year that he was there which which is good he had that experience I mean that's why you go like I you know I mean everybody wants there's so many guys want to just go straight to the pros but like that experience is something that I mean you, you don't get back no no I, he loved it he, he loved it you know if, if we talk now he still talks about times we had at LSU like that's I'm also that's where you know yeah. where we connected anyway but no doubt about that. And, and LSU, you know, wasn't even, isn't even a basketball school, really. Yeah. I mean, we had a tremendous amount of hype when he was there. I mean, almost everywhere we went was sold out crowds and that was cool. Um, but then again, you know, that's a blessing and a curse because when we start underperforming, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's quick to blame from the outside world. And it's, that's, that was tough, but all in all, yeah. When was, like, you start pr practicing with him when he, when he first gets on campus. What was the first moment, like, is there a play or something he did where you realized oh, yeah. just how special he was? Like, what was it? Well, he's probably the best passer I've still ever played with. So we're not going to tell that to Phil Pressey? Phil, Phil is good. Um, <laughs> Phil is good. Braden Hobbs is amazing passer okay but I don't know Ben is just like him being 6'9 it's 6'10 you know it's it's a different type of passing it's and when we were playing uh pickup before the year started I was on his team and he was at the opposite free throw line and I'd run down the court and was sitting kind of open in the corner and he threw me like a three-quarter court bullet chest pass that I'd never seen before. I don't know why it's ever, not many, not many people can do that, you know, it's, uh, and it was Chris right in my hands and I was almost shocked. Like, Oh my gosh, I almost stung my hands. And then I, I shot it and I, I made the shot and I just remember pointing at him like, you know, like, wow, <laughs> like, thank you. Nice pass, you know, but that's, I was like, I'm always going to remember this. And yeah, that's one of the first moments I knew that he was special. <laughs> yeah, that, that I I feel like there's always those moments. Like I for me, I went to Syracuse and like I didn't play basketball, but we were playing pickup in a gym in like one of the rec gyms, and all of a sudden Paul Harris, who played there, like steps into the gym, goes up, takes an alley oop, catches it one handed, like behind him, and throws it down. I was like, all right, so that's what makes him special. So like, there's all those moments. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, some of the college, the young college athleticism is just different yeah. you don't see that now it's just something about that age you just have the best spring and <laughs> at least I did <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's for sure that would have an effect on a lot of people where's your uh, you mentioned like your kind of transformation from UNC Ash for the LSU now to playing pro where's your game at compared to like where you've been like are you playing at your best like where where where's your game at uh I'm without without a doubt playing at my best. I'm easily right now the best shooter that I've ever been. Um, I'm the best scorer that I've ever been. Um, I'm, I think I'm just as, I was strong in college, I was strong. I, I don't know if I'm stronger now, but I'm smarter. Uh, my defense, it, you know, I've had to get it better. You know, yeah. if I'm gonna just play for a team like this, you know, that's, that's another conversation. That's probably one of the toughest parts. Um, uh, so right now I'm definitely the best player that I've ever been without a doubt. That, and, and like you're, that's, that's where you want to be as you like probably hit this point of your career. Um, obviously, we, I mean, having you on, we have to talk a little music because of who your dad is in, in Bruce. Yeah, why not? Why not? What was it like growing up with someone who obviously has hit songs on his own, played with the Grateful Dead? Like, what's it like having him as a father? It, the, the problem is, I say, like, youth is wasted on the young. <laughs> because when I was young, you know, I you can't really blame me for it, but I didn't really fully understand the capacity of which 
he was operating as a musician until I was a little bit older. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I got to do some amazing things, you know, growing up, you know, from, from him, some, especially in the sports world, he's a big sports guy. And I mean, you know, you, now as a kid, you know, I'd look at him on stage and it wouldn't really hit me, you know, I just, because guy, you're a kid, I guess that has something to do with it. But yeah. Um, then when I became kind of a teenager, like a, late in my teens, I really started embracing his music and just loving, really appreciating the situation kind of, I guess, just the, the happenstance that I'm his son, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, it's just, uh, it's kind of otherworldly in some degree. Like sometimes I watch him like, wow, that's, that's my dad, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I don't, I don't take it for granted. Like I certainly did as a kid when I got to do like the most amazing things. Uh, but yeah, it's, and I fully respect another aspect of him being my dad is I also got to see just how hard he worked at the piano at his, his own craft, even after he'd attained you know, fame and success, he was still hungry and still is, creatively hungry kind of like he's still trying to get better and find new aspects of the music world to get into and get get better at and it's pretty amazing it's inspiring it always has been um from the point that i was able to recognize it <laughs> yeah now I, I i think that's fair what's the uh i mean did you play any music growing up like you do you have any type of like musical experience talent <laughs> The thing is, my dad is a huge basketball guy. Okay. So I, I picked up a ball when I was, you know, two or three and just hadn't really looked back. And he, he's kind of loved it. You know, he's, he's kind of ridden the journey just as much as, as I have and, and just appreciated a lot of the, you know, the people he's met because of the basketball that I've played and places I've gone and uh, the world that, because he was a good player growing up too. He could have played Division Two out of high school. Um, he's kind of like a six, four point forward, I guess okay. I could say. All right. Uh, but I never really played much music. I, yeah, just basketball has always been my life. I can, I know the basic chords on guitar. I can play, you know, you know, a few chords, you can play a ton of songs, but yeah. nothing to speak of. And he always was like, and I say this to everybody who asks, there's a common question. Yeah, I'm he's sure. like, you know, well, if you want to play piano, I could give you the keys to the kingdom. You know, like I could show you everything. I could I could show you the roast, which, of course, he's in my mind a virtuoso of piano pretty much. I mean, he's he's just, he's just a different level. Um, and uh, yeah, so I never did that, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, like. I mean, we, you find your love and like for him, he's got the mixture now of music and basketball. And for you, like you, you find your love basketball and like, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Yeah, for sure. And he's, he's been fine with that. Yeah. That, that, and, and that's a, that's a good dad. Uh, you, I were talking somewhere else about his song, the way it is and how much it meant when he wrote it and, and performed it before. And now like, what it means for everything going on in the United States now. And I wonder like what his message to you was about it, maybe growing up, because at some point I'm guessing he probably tells you a story. Uh, the, the main thing is that the, the way it is, I don't think was ever supposed to be as big of a hit as it has been. Um, but yeah, cause I mean, it's a serious song, a song about civil rights. Um, and it's crazy, you know, uh, you know, he mentions the year 1964 in the song and some of the same issues are still existent today. And it's kind of wild. Um, also, Tupac's version of the song, you know, changes that that gets brought up a lot, um, yeah. especially in this time period. But, but you know, growing up, I, you know, I, don't, I don't can't remember a time you, you never had to, like a sit down really. Right, where yeah. Just, like, Here's why this song is big. And you know, this, I, you know, most hits like like that is aren't don't have serious messages attached to them. I wouldn't say, especially in the mid '80s. Yeah. Um, but it's 
it's, it's, it'll always be a classic. I'd say that's a timeless song. And you're right. It's uh, relevant right now. That's for sure. How, uh, like when you, if you had to pick one of his songs, like, are there songs that you like to listen to that are like on your Spotify or on your phone? Or is it like just uh, you, you stay away? Oh, no, I do not stay away one bit. <laughs> I have a, a playlist of his with probably 70 to 80 songs on it. Okay. I can honestly say, and maybe I'm slightly biased because he is my dad, that I like, I'll probably like six or seven songs off every single album that he's put out. Um, and, you know, honestly, the way it is, is not one of my, it's not really one of my favorites. Okay. If I hear it on the, on the, my playlist, especially the original version, the 86 version, I most time pass it. Uh, I have songs of his that have kind of gone unsung that I think are, that are some of my favorites. Um, unheralded songs that I think deserve a little more attention, but you know, that's, you can't help that. So give uh, me one or two. Well, he released an album in August that's, I mean, if you listen to him now, it's, it's different. He's, He's changed up his style several times, but yeah. he has a song called My Resolve um, is with uh, is the lead singer of the band, The Shins, as well. Um, he has a verse on it, and, but that, that, that's a great song to me. Um, he has this, oh gosh, uh, Swing Street is another one. Um, See the Same Way. I, I, I mean, from each album, I could go and name probably five. Fields of, Fields of Grey, uh, Cyclone, um, you know, uh, resting, resting Place, Tango King. I mean, <laughs> you probably <laughs> don't, don't know any of these songs, but that's okay. You know, you, you can check them out and see what you yeah. think. No, I, I like that. I, am go I will check them out. And hopefully, these people who listen, uh, give, give them a listen. What you mentioned kind of taking some of the stuff for granted, but you look back like music, like musician wise, who is the coolest person you've had a chance to meet or interact with through him? Because there are some perks to having a dad that's so famous. For sure. Oh, 100%. Um, it is a really tough one. And honestly, to be, to be honest, given my interest in sports and I probably met more cool basketball players. <laughs> that's cool. Or people in maybe necessarily maybe in show business than uh that is, give me a couple in music, but 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 I can um anything music wise. I mean I've that's really that's really really tough. I don't what know. about what about basketball wise? Corey, are, are you a Grateful Dead fan? Not a, not a huge one. That's I, I'm not quite in that generation. Yeah, that's a, uh, it, it has its, <laughs> its scene for sure. Um, I mean, uh, I'd say what the, one of the coolest people I've met, interacted with was George Lucas. Oh, um, that's a great one. Creator, creator of Star Wars, you yeah. know, legendary figure. Mainly because me and my brother actually had like conversations with him and, and talked to him. And, and he was like a good guy to us. He's nice to us. Um, my dad works with Spike Lee a lot. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, just, it's just endless almost. You know, basketball players have been around almost everybody, you know. I'm uh, sure Bill Walton. I was, I was a ball boy at two All-Star games. You know, oh, you're around – you see everybody. I held, the three, I, I held a rack at a three-point contest in 2002, I believe. Okay. I'm holding one at the back when they allowed kids to do that. Me and my brother each held a rack, and I remember holding it – like my life depends on it as Ray Allen, you know, takes balls and shoots <laughs> at an all-star game. Like stuff like that is just. That's unreal. Even back then I could, I could recognize how amazing that was. Um, but, you know, I'd say Barack Obama. Wow. I met him. I mean, that was, that was pretty uh, otherworldly, just amazing. Was it before, uh, before or dur during his presidency? It was, uh, to the, it was before his second term. It was okay. when he was kind of campaigning for his second term is. It was uh, the fall of 2011. Yeah. What, like, I mean, I can't, I've, I've never had a chance to meet a president. So I don't know. Like, what do you say? Like, what do you say when you first meet someone who's the president of the United States? I don't remember what I said, but I think we talked about basketball. Of course. Because, you know, Ob Obama can do that. And, yeah. and he really enjoyed that. 
kind of like a breath of fresh air for him because my dad was there, obviously. And I think he kind of he invited me to the White House to play like a pickup game with him. Uh, obviously, that never happened. <laughs> I was a freshman in college at that point. I can't can't just get away. But uh, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, uh, just a couple more here, and then we'll, we'll get you out of here. Um, overall, like your game, because obviously you're overseas now, you spent some time in the G League. How do you evaluate success? Is it a year-to-year -year thing in terms of like how the team does, what your numbers are? Like how do you evaluate success as you continue on this basketball journey? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, but as far as where I'm at right now, um, winning is as important as it's ever been, um, you know, especially as, as kind of a first year, you know, even though I'm older, like only my second year in Europe. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to, to be on a, a, with a club like this and, uh, but to do well, uh, personally do well, have like good stats on a winning team is, you know, obviously the main goal. And, but, you know, I, especially at this time period, you know, with, you know, this, this COVID year, COVID season, I mean, winning is kind of just everything right now. I mean, it's, it's the difference between high, it, as it's not like it isn't otherwise, but right now it's like kind of all we have. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, you work, you work hard, you, you want to play well as, as, you know, myself you know so you know it's you always want to play well <laughs> yeah of course and, uh, so, so that that's the goal it's but with me it's also just year to year I don't like looking too far in advance um I don't I don't like focusing too much on stats and general percentages uh as as a good example um I think that's kind of fool's gold to some degree because they can change pretty quickly and but, uh, but I definitely appreciate them if they're good. <laughs> <laughs> when they're good, you use them to your advantage. Yeah, so when they're good, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it. <laughs> uh, all right, a couple more, a uh, couple fun questions to, to get you out of here. What, I, you went to LSU, so what's better than a night game at Tiger Stadium? Gosh. Is there anything? You, you know what? If I, you want me to be kind of honest with you? Yeah. Some of those night games are more of a pain in the tail really? than anything. Because it's such a zoo. You can't go anywhere afterwards. You, the, the traffic is just insane. You have almost 100,000 people. And when I was there, almost half of the people would leave before the game even ended because they'd be <laughs> tailgating all day, you know, getting They're drunk. And, and unless it's like Alabama or some huge game, you know, they're – Win or lose, they're, they're starting to crash, <laughs> tri trickle out of the stadium. And, uh, but don't get me wrong, the, the, the whole scene, the whole scene of a night game at Tiger Stadium is something, uh, you know, just kind of nothing like it. So yeah. I haven't, you know, I haven't been to one, I've only been to one game since I left LSU. Just I've never been able to, I've been playing. Right. So. Don't worry, there's plenty of time for that. <laughs> but I'm sure you watched the national championship game last year. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I kind of couldn't. I mean, you we had a in Poland. If I was in Poland. We had a game the next day, and you know, it's it's a it's, it comes on at one. <laughs> I mean, I you know, I, you I watched got it when you woke up. So you know what? I didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. I, 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 I didn't want. I needed to get my sleep. What kind of we had? We had an important game the next day, so I saw the highlights, and I had more than enough confidence that the Tigers <laughs> are going to take it. And you know, I, I figured my watching wouldn't change the outcome, but uh, I saw ample amount of highlights, and it was fantastic for Louisiana, the state, and and the program, the the school. Unbelievable. This year, not too good. No, but, yeah. no, this year was a tough one for the Tigers. <laughs> but that title can carry some weight for a little while. It is. Uh, the, you know, the LSU football fan base is brutal. You know, title or else, you know. <laughs> you know, you lose a few games, it's, it's you know, they want to murder you. So it's, uh, it's, it's cutthroat. But that's high expectations are, you know, are a good thing um, if you embrace them. And – 
I love, I love Coach O, and I think we'll rebound well from this year. I think it's this year's kind of tough. It's yeah, a little bit asterisk a weird excited, year but you know. overall, yeah. Uh, when you first get back into the United States, what's the one item of food that you have to get when when you get back and land? Like, what's the like, first go to? I feel like Chick Fil A is what so many people were gonna say if you yeah, ask that. Yeah, got question. a lot of Chick Fil A and a lot of Mexican. A lot of Mexican. I bet Phil said Mexican. Is no, that what he, he said? Chick Fil A. See, that's what I'm saying. Ch everyone says Chick Fil A. Hats off to Chick Fil A for having that type of <laughs> effect on people. But uh, man, the first thing I'm gonna get. I know this is gonna be really odd, but I'm gonna get. I love Jimmy John's. Oh, okay. I yeah. love Jimmy John's. I love yeah. Um, God, it's four. I can't, I can't think of the, the number four is what I always get. The, yeah. Can't think of the name of it, but, but that's, that's like a go-to and, and you just can't really get that here. Um, just a, just a crisp sandwich like that. So good solid sub that it's not happening in Germany. Well, they, they have subway and I think they have their places, but it's not as, it's certainly not, not as common. I wouldn't think. And, uh, and not like Jimmy John's plus the Jimmy chips, barbecue, Jimmy chips, and a, a full pickle cut in the quarters. Oh, uh huh. Yep. Yeah. That's my thing. Um, yeah. So, that, so there you have it. And my wife will be pleased with me saying this because she she's kind of right there with me. Yeah. She she likes it too. Yeah. No. Hey, we had one at Syracuse, and that was uh, it was the go-to. And they used to deliver like at late night. They would deliver in like ten yeah. minutes. It was the greatest thing ever. And they would when I was in uh, Dallas as well. Yeah. Five to ten minutes. <laughs> five to ten minutes you're, you're good give, it's like, give them credit where it's due that's pretty good they are really really fast uh well hey uh we, we appreciate the time good luck here the the rest of the way hopefully we'll have a chance to uh to catch up again soon and uh we'll we'll be watching thanks so much i appreciate you having me all right thanks